Hi, this is Jim Gibson in San Diego. We're looking at a Teldata install. It's uh, going to be a, uh, a demo. They did a demo to tore out a lot of the walls, things like that. And now they're going to be doing pre-cable. So please stay tuned. You get some uh, basic cabling uh, done here and uh, at least the first phase, it's called uh, pre-cable. Hi, this is Jim with Tell Data in San Diego, and we're doing a pull. And so uh, there's some uh, cables that are being pulled here, and you always pull from a central location. So there's 12 boxes there, and what they're doing is they're pulling, and the cable's going up into the ceiling, and then of course it's going out. So it's always you should always have multiple boxes if you're doing multiple pulls. And this is this room is a demo demolition. So it was another company that was in here, another tenant that was in here, and this tenant uh, decided to leave, or the lease was up, and this new company decided to take over uh, for this uh, company. And so what you have here is you, uh, you know, they tore down some of the walls. You can see the walls. This is probably an old firewall, I, can, I think. Might be a soundproofing wall, I don't know. You know, cut down on the sound. But the cable uh, comes out and you can see it's being pulled here, some of it. And uh, those little things are called J-hooks. There's different styles. There are, there are plastic style there. There's metal styles. You can get the, uh, the one style that I have on, on the website at cablesupply.com. We sell this stuff and there is a stub out. Now stub out is just a conduit, a four inch conduit with a bushing at the end so that you can pull cable through walls fairly easy. So what we're doing here is we're pulling some cable. The technician from Teldata is pulling cable through. And what he's done is that's a service loop. So he's going to pull the loop down because he has a 90 degree turn here. So that service loop, as he pulls it down, it just makes it easy for him to, uh, to feed it through the cable at the 90 degree turn. So you can see that it's a 90 degree turn there, he's in the corner. So now what's happening is the technician here is going to wind it up and is, is going to leave it here because um, because the uh, because the cubicles aren't installed yet and so you want to put it up in a protected area you can see the other service they're not actually service loops but it's always good to have service loops to have little extra cable up in the ceiling uh, but in this case they're not service loops they just don't have the uh, uh, obviously this is a construction site we don't have the uh, the cubicles installed yet so you got to get the cubicles installed and then these and then what's going to happen is they will turn around and uh, and uh, they will turn around and uh, feed the cable through the cubicle so there's usually at least two phases to a cabling uh, deal and that's uh, first one is to pull the cable and the second one is to set finish and um, at this point what you want to do is get that cable up and especially it's easier if you don't have the uh, ceiling up yet. You can do it after the ceiling's up, but it's easier when it, the ceiling's not up. Um, and that's, that's pull cable. So you're going to pull cable everywhere. And this is probably going to be a two-phase pull cable because they've got to pull it to the area and then they've got to wait for the cubes to come in. And then once the cubes come in, then they turn around and, and finish the uh, pre-cable. So the nice thing about this too is they're using pull string. And, uh, you can see it's a little green, little green uh, string in there. You can see it there. Now that green string um, helps them to pull the cable. So it goes all the way back to the room where the cable boxes are, and they attach cable to that pull string, and then the person down here can uh, turn around and, and pull the, uh, uh, the pull string and then uh, pull the cable to that location. Again, you gotta have a service loop when you have a 90 degree like that. You can't just uh, pull around a 90 degree, it just it really is a pain. So you always do a little loop there.
Now the other thing I want to point out to you is the ceiling. The ceiling, all these walls are cut. So in the past, maybe they were firewalls. They're not anymore. Once they're cut like this, they're no longer a firewall. So you have no code requirements uh, in that. Uh, so you just pull through it, you don't worry about it, you don't have to put a uh, fire uh, stop or anything else in them. Um, but let's take a look at the HVAC. And uh, if you see everywhere there's two, two uh, ducts coming down. Now if one is an intake and one is an exhaust from the HVAC, then it's a non-plenumrated ceiling and you don't need to use plenum cable in a non-plenumrated ceiling. What you use is you use um, um, uh, non-plenumrated cable. And I'm getting distracted here, sorry. Um, and so the difference in price is significant. Uh, plenumrated cable is about twice as expensive as non-plenum cable. Um, you have to know your jurisdiction. There are some jurisdictions that require plenum rated cable um, in every install. Now, a plenum rated cable would mean that the ceiling is the return. So they have one feed duct feeding the heater and the air conditioner down to the, the living area, and then they use the whole ceiling as a return duct. But if you have a return duct and a feed duct, then it's a non plenum rated ceiling. So you need to uh, know what type of ceiling you have before you buy the cable or else you're buying the wrong cable and you can't, you can't put it up there uh, because it's uh, non plenum and, and you can't put a non plenum cable in a plenum ceiling. Now you can put a plenum cable in a non plenum ceiling, that's fine, uh, but that's beyond the code. It's not required. Again, your jurisdiction might be different. So you have to uh, figure out what is going to work for your jurisdiction. Now this is a demo, so there's going to be a lot of old, old sloppy wire from years past. And you're going to see it right here. But you're going to see this wire right here, and that wire right there has, uh, has been spliced together using uh, beans, or jelly beans, beanies. And it's used for splicing wire. You can't do that with computer cable. Of course, in this case, it's just going to run a telephone. So you got a telephone here. The cable runs to the telephone. There are some of the old jacks that are there. And usually that red wire like that, that's some sort of control wire. It might be fire alarm, it might be HVAC. But it's not um, a computer wire. So uh, this is basically the installation. This is how it looks. It's actually a very nice, clean installation. It's going very well. Again, they're still in the first phase, first part of the first phase, but they're still in that phase. Oh, you can see the cable. Now, you're working with other trades. There needs to be some negotiation to stay out of their way, for them to stay out of your way, things like that. That's pretty normal in this type of construction. Right here, what you have is you have uh, uh, stub outs. Now stub outs, usually the electrician puts in the stub outs, but it's this regular conduit that goes all the way down the wall to an outlet. And when you have it up there like that, it's a 90 degree bend above the ceiling. Can you see the ceiling, ceiling reel go, rail going in there? It's a 90 degree bend above the ceiling, so that's why it's called a stub out and it's usually above the ceiling. Now these is, this is nice because they have bushings on the end. Normally there's, there's no bushings on the end. It's just a piece of conduit coming out. And you really don't need bushings for low voltage. I don't know why they put them in here, but that's extra. Um, and this is turning into a very nice job with the, uh, with the J hooks and all and everything else, getting them up ahead of time. Now the J hooks are attached to stringers. Let me show you one. I'm walking back, see if I can find the stringer here. So the J hooks are attached to that metal, metal wire coming down the wall. You see it? And the metal wire is attached to the sub ceiling or sub floor from above. And uh, they're, they're called stringers. And usually you can get your, uh, your ceiling guys to put them in or you have to put them in yourself. And it takes a uh, device to put them in. It's no big deal. Um, but if you look up there, there's also hooks that someone put in a long time ago. You can attach your stringers to them. 
And sometimes you can attach your stringers uh, to the ceiling supports, but they're, they're normally used for ceiling supports. And of course, they, they are used for J-hooks, to so hold J-hooks up. Um, and you can see them right there, how they're using them. So it holds the cable up, keeps the cable off the ceiling. This amount of cable hanging on the ceiling after a little bit of time is gonna show bulging on the ceiling. If you're running one or two cables and the ceiling's already up, it's no big deal. You don't need J-hooks. But generally speaking, when you're, when you're putting in new cable, uh, you want to put J-hooks up there. So that's your, uh, it's a nice installation. They're doing a great job. It's a great company. If you're in Southern California, you need to hire them if you need cabling. Uh, tell data. Okay, so I've given you a quick review of everything. Now this is some cable that's been up there for years. It's not tell data. This is from the old suite. That's a 25 pair of cables. It's a lot thicker. Usually it's this color, this uh, foam company greenish gray color. And it has 25 pairs of cable. When you deal with um, uh, voice and data networks, you don't deal with individual wires, you're dealing with pairs. It's never, a pair, you know, individual wires. Now this one is really thick and that's probably a 50 pair cable or something else that I'm unaware of. Uh, but rarely we ever see that anywhere. And in fact, you're hardly going to see 25 pair anymore because everything is going to voice over IP. And of course, voice over IP is really just uh, you know, computer language, um, binary language, uh, and uh, the phone is now a computer. This is really sloppy up here, as you could see, from years of abuse and no one doing the job right or clean. And it, it takes extra effort to do it right. And sometimes people are in a hurry and they go sometimes with the lowest bid and then they end up with junk like that. Well, not that all lowest bids are junk, by the way, but that's what happens. So, if you got a good cabling company, or if you're planning to do cabling, then make sure you do it right. Try to think if there's anything else here. Don't see anything else. Again, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com. Uh, thank you for listening to this video today. I do appreciate it. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And of course, uh, we also have subscribe star in the description. And what that is, that is an organization that um, you can donate a dollar a month or five dollars a month. And it helps me do videos like this uh, because this does take time and effort. And but I do enjoy doing it. So please help me. Uh, you can also uh, do a donation through PayPal and uh, uh, PayPal can, uh, uh, you know, you can do a monthly or one-time donation, things like that. Again, Jim Gibson, Cable Supply. Thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.